John Scott, Lindsey Moppert here as the Bills preparing to open the regular season this coming Sunday afternoon against the Arizona Cardinals. We're going to start with the captain, something we've been waiting on as we've seen other teams announce theirs across the league. We knew there'd be a lot of change because a lot of the previous captains are no longer on the team. Josh Allen, Terrell Bernard, pretty easy decisions here. They're the only decisions, though, and I think that's probably the biggest surprise. Yeah, they went from eight captains to just two. Now, mind you, Sean McDermott did say that there's going to be a small leadership council of about 10 players. It's actually not that small. Uh, but at, at the same time, I actually like that they went in this direction this year. I feel like with not necessarily uncertainty, but just a lot of new factors on this team. I think going with two obvious answers there in Josh Allen and Terrell Bernard, I think that was a good decision. I think it's just interesting. Taron Johnson's been here a really long time. Deion Dawkins has been here a really long time. I thought that they would go maybe with more of the, hey, tenured players who've put in their time, have grown with this organization as leaders, and ultimately get the C put on their chest, something some of these guys have actually had before. Reed Ferguson has been a captain for a really long time. They all could be part of this leadership council. That's also not something that is particularly new. Sean McDermott, when they've had gone through certain things on and off the field, has referenced leadership councils in the past here. It's just this is more at the forefront because you only have two captains. It's it's not something that I find problematic. I just think it's an interesting thing that I, I don't particularly agree with. And you've obviously been covering the team for many more years than I have at this <laughs> point. But uh, I think the thing about Taron Johnson, because he's definitely a guy I would have expected. Um, same with Deion Dawkins, very, you know, likes to put his two cents in. He, he, he definitely has those leadership qualities. But I think Again, in a season where there is just a lot of new moving parts and things like that, I think going safe with two guys, offense, defense, here you go. I, I think it was a good move. And the guys who are not actually captain captains, they're still going to be leaders on the team. Exactly. You don't have to just have the patch on your uniform to be someone that can be impactful on and off the field here. Let's shift to the injury front because it's incredibly different than it was the last time we even were talking about things. In a positive way, only Javon Solomon not practicing, Mitch Trubisky limited. That's also incredibly surprising. Everybody else, Lindsay, full participation, which means the Bills somehow in a two-week span go from like 12, 15 guys that we had to put on a nice graphic on air to – it looks like everybody's going to be available. Yeah, and the thing, uh, I spoke with Curtis Samuel after practice, and he pretty much said that if you have the time, let's just be safe with it. And last week, they had the time, right? It, it wasn't a game week or anything like that, and he reassured us that he was feeling great and, and he's ready to go. And now that makes us, with the wide receiver position, we'll start there because it's such a talking point, how is it actually going to shake out? We rarely saw the starters with Josh Allen through the preseason. Where's the chemistry there? Who is actually out there? Because in the one series, we saw Keon Coleman, we saw Mac Hollins, then we saw Curtis Samuel, then we saw Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Let's see, this is the number one thing I think on the list here of what is the offense and what is the wide receiver group going to look like against the Arizona Cardinals? Now, this was a topic that was very interesting with a couple of players that we spoke to afterwards, starting with Deion Dawkins. He used the word unpredictable when describing the offense as a whole. What can we expect to see? And at first he said, do you guys think unpredictable? Is that a bad word? Is that something that's kind of used negatively? And, you know, I wouldn't say so. We kind of asked a couple of other players, what is your take if, if your offense is called unpredictable? And I think really the basis of what we heard is just that there are so many targets that it's hard for a defense to kind of game plan as to what they are going to do out there. Uh, and then when describing it, Khalil Shakir said, went back to the Joe Brady uh, mantra and said, Everybody eats. We don't know how much everybody's going to eat or when it's going to be someone's time at the table, but back again to that mindset. So I think it's going to be really interesting in this first week just to see kind of how that plays out because we don't we don't even know. I don't even think Joe Brady knows because you constantly hear from offensive coordinators. You don't really know the team that you have and what the best things are for your offense or defense until you get into the game action, until you get a feel for the guys and how they're all gelling and everything like that. I've been using the word different. I just think the Bills' offense is going to look different. I'm not saying it's going to look better or it's going to look worse. I think it's going to look different, and that's where the unpredictable aspect of it tends to go. Let's go to the defensive side of things because the other main position group that we've been talking about with uncertainty is the safety spot. 
Taylor Rapp, we knew it. We've been saying it since the spring. He's there at one of the spots. The uncertainty was at the other one, but the guy we've been telling everyone about since OTA's mini camp when we were standing here back in May was DeMar Hamlin's making plays. DeMar Hamlin is a legitimate contender to start at safety next to Taylor Rapp. Some people thought it was simply because of injuries. That's a big factor. But here we are heading into week one, and DeMar Hamlin is the Bills' starting safety. And Christian Benford said something very interesting after practice. He said that a lot of everything that he knows about DeMar, DeMar Hamlin and his game is kind of the stuff that, that we don't see. It's like the... the unforeseen stuff behind the scenes all of all of those things and just his growth on the field I think that you know hearing from DeMar as well after practice today it was it was pretty moving I mean he talked about being very process oriented and and taking one day at a time it's very important to not skip any steps and so I mean here you have it he went through the process he said last year was mainly for healing and now he's not really thinking about maybe the stuff that used to stress him out or, or some of those things as much as he is just getting back to his game. Using words like putting himself purposely in situations that maybe he was afraid of yes. or that he was seriously uncomfortable with looking more long term, saying if I put myself through these positions and circumstances a year ago, fresh off of what happened in Cincinnati. That long game when he finally gets back to a moment like now, what we've seen in the spring, it's not it's not a factor for him, but he does say, hey, I think about that night in Cincinnati all the time, every single day, but he does it purposely to count his blessings and also understand th and, and appreciate the lengths that he's gone. I, I mean, it's you're right. We don't hear from DeMar a lot. We have not heard from DeMar a lot since that night in Cincinnati, understandably so. When he does speak and he reflects on yep. it, boy, is it, is it some powerful insightful. stuff. Insightful, yeah, very insightful. And I think it's hard for anyone to really grasp what exactly happened and, and what he had to go through to get himself mentally back into a place where he can play football and, and put the pads on every day. And so I, I think, again, he was just very insightful, very inspiring what he had to say. Now, from a football sense of things, I sat down with Taylor Rapp and he made it abundantly clear as a guy who's played at other teams. What the Bills' defense asks of their safeties is unlike most teams across the league. He says middle linebacker and the two safeties, they're the ones that drive that entire unit. Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer have been doing that for seven years. You kind of maybe just took for granted what they were able to do, not only from a physical standpoint, but from a communication standpoint, something that us in the stands or something, but we probably truly can't appreciate. Now you have Rap, who, yeah, he was here a year ago. Yes, damar has been in the system, but now they're playing together with Terrell Bernard. Now it'll be interesting to see out the gate against a Cardinals offense that has Kyler Murray, Trey McBride, Marvin Harris Jr., James Conner. There are some legitimate weapons you have to worry about over there. Let's see early on how the communication from the safeties to the linebackers to the defensive front, that plays in on top of the fact Bobby Babich is now their defensive play caller. Yeah, and uh, Sean McDermott talking about it. He said it for so long. I think we all kind of had an inkling, but he confirmed it today that he will be the defensive play caller, at least for week one. Again, another one of those situations where they say one week at a time, one day at a time, but he expressed his full confidence in Bobby Babich. And again, I'm going to bring up something that Christian Benford said that was pretty insightful on just We've heard it a thousand times. He brings the juice. He brings the energy. But what I thought was interesting that he said is that, you know, he can be a joke, sir, but he's also, and he can be real with you. So he'll be real with you, but it's in a respectful manner. And so he said, like, that is the part of what he loves about Bobby Babbage is that he can be serious with you and he'll tell you what's up. He'll put you in your place, but he is respectful about it. And then he can go right back to joking around. So the interesting dynamic is that Sean McDermott touched on was he's relinquishing the duties to someone else. He's doing it for the first time, but kind of the dynamic of he hears and knows what Bobby's calling. Does he agree with mm. it? Okay. But whether he does or does not, this is Bobby's ship to sail right. here and kind of just, allowing this to play out and allowing some growing pains, which from a head coaching pers uh, perspective and a guy that I don't believe is on the hot seat, but many of you probably do or wish that he was to allow someone else to almost determine your fate in some capacity is an interesting way to, to look at it. And that's, that's a dynamic he's going to have to get used to. Yeah. And Sean McDermott said, he, he said, you know, there's always going to be situations and calls and, and things like that where 
we do like we're going to disagree that's just going to happen that's the nature of the game and kind of that situation where he's handing almost the baton over a bit from a defensive uh, minded head coach um, and something that he dealt with himself so yeah I think I think he deserves it again we've said this a thousand times and I think he's ready for it at this point I'm going to throw you a curveball which you really love but I'll go first here looking ahead to the Arizona Cardinals this weekend here let's each look for something on each side of the ball that we're going to be focusing in on when the game is rolling here like I said I'll go first on the Bills offense what I will oh, be looking for I'm actually ready this because time. okay then you can go you okay. can take it okay because I was gonna say I'm gonna start with the offense I think for me the key to the game is essentially we saw it so much in, in the early games last season where they come out slow right and that's that is so hard to come back from that especially with a new offense like this I think they need to connect early Josh needs to connect with his re new receivers early and they need to get things going quickly uh, as in the first quarter I'm going to say offensive line because that's a position that yeah there is some transition between uh, Connor McGovern kicking inside David Edwards going to the guard position but all five of those guys were here a year ago four of them were starters I want to see the communication again from the center position with Connor McGovern doing it and also just as the rest of the pieces around Josh Allen have to find their way they need time, literally need time for him to make those decisions and get on the same page and also establish the run. I think the line of scrimmage is going to be key in this one, so I want to see what the Bills' offensive line can do. Defense, do you want to go first here with your defensive thing, or would you like me to take the reins? Mm, you take the reins first. I'm going to take the reins and say it's containing Kyler Murray. He's a guy now a year and a half uh, removed from an ACL injury. You saw him kind of start to get the little scampering at the back end of last season. Dual threat quarterbacks, we know. The Bills have a phenomenal one. The dynamic things that they can do off script. And the Bills could do everything right, and Kyler Murray could still make them pay. This is something in an area that containing Kyler Murray is going to be a big thing for me. It's the dynamic of the pass rushers, which is a big question for me, oh. is Getting to the quarterback while containing the quarterback, it's a, it's a tough chess match day in and day out. I think that's going to be a key. I think I'm just going to go with the communication aspect of just middle linebacker. Then you have DeMar Hamlin obviously starting in that uh, safety position for the first time in, in almost two years at this point. Um, Russell Douglas, we can go back to those comments. Of, he said, you know, how important that is for him to make those plays is just the connection or the, the communication aspect of that group and just how everything flows back there. So I think that is probably the, the big key for me on defense. Good job. Thank you. On the fly. On the really fly. proud of you. We're not we're not out the gate. We're coming out hot here. With Lindsay Mobbert, I'm John Scott. Bills, Cardinals, one o'clock on Sunday.